Everybody, how you doing? It's your girl, Cece Peniston, and this is my story from my mouth. How old are you? Where are you from originally, and where do you currently reside? Now, Tok, you know a woman never tells her age. <laughs> but I do come out in the 90s, if that's any help. Um, I was originally from Dayton, Ohio, currently living in Arizona. Okay. Um, how would you say was your upbringing? Poor, middle class, or rich? Uh, middle class, but in my mind, I thought we were rich. <laughs> you know, as a kid, you don't know the difference, but now that I'm older, I understand middle class. Okay. Did you grow up in a single or co-parenting home? Co-parenting home. Okay. What did you think you would be as a kid? You know, it's funny. I know people probably think this is crazy, but I always knew that I was sing. From the um, 11 years old, I kept telling my brothers and sisters, hey, I'm gonna be, I said, I'm gonna be a singer one day. I remember when I first stepped on stage and I did my first play and I was like, oh, this feels like home to me. So for me, I always knew I would be singing. I always got my education though. I went to JUCO actually, I went to junior college because my grandmother was really into education. So she was like, baby, just always get your diploma because you never know what may happen. But in the back of my mind, I was like, I'm gonna be singing. <laughs> so how far did you get in your education? Um, I graduated with an AA, an AA degree. And then right after that, probably like 1920, I started getting in the studio and I got my deal soon after that. And I was traveling, on the, uh, I was traveling the world. You ain't lying, Ed. At what age do you feel you became an adult? You know, I feel like transition for me really started happening probably around, I don't know why, but 36 stands out in my mind. Um, I've been through a lot of different changes in my life and I felt like when I came in the music industry at 21, I was really naive and innocent and you know, I come from Arizona. We went to Magic Mountain or to Disneyland or something like that, but it wasn't the same as the music industry. So I would say because of experiences and things that I went through at different parts of my life, 36. I feel like my early struggles as an artist were people kept trying to change me from being a home girl, from being just a regular girl and me wanting to sing to like, you gotta be this diva with the lashes and lipstick and all the extra stuff. And when I came from Arizona, I didn't know nothing about that. Like at the time, we used to, you know that little black eyebrow pencil? <laughs> I used to use the little black eyebrow pencil, fill in my eyelash, my eyebrows, do a little liner and a little lipstick, that was it. I never knew anything about putting extra eyelashes or anything on. So probably changing the girl into the diva who I've become today and understand about the music industry. Did you have anyone close to you that doubted your dream? You know what, I was so headstrong, I didn't give a damn if anybody doubted my dream at the time, because I was like, I don't care what you say, this is what I'm doing. And like anybody around me knew it, like if they did, and they came to me, I can't remember because I was just so headstrong about what I was going to do in the world. Okay. Who was your biggest supporter? My mother was like my ride or die at the time. She was my biggest supporter because when I told her, I was like, hey, I want to sing. She was like, okay, are you sure? I was like, yeah. She was like, okay. I started doing pageant. I started doing like, you know, little karaoke contests where you win in $300 for your school clothes that you lay out the night before. <laughs> I was that kid, like, oh, I got some piggy bank money, you know? Right. So I was, I would say her. Okay. What about as far as in business, who was your biggest supporter? Actually, my, uh, my mom and my fam, to me, was my biggest supporters in business because they never stifled my dream. And actually, my mother actually became my manager at a later point in my life when I had felt like, hey, I'm not sure if I want to even do this right now. She was like, I don't have many moments like that, but when I did have that moment, she was like, I'm gonna step in, I don't know what I'm doing, but I'm gonna learn it and I'll be your manager. You know, 
I would say one of the highlights of my journey was being able to make history. Um, being able to go to South Africa after apartheid and being one of the first, you know, black African American women to go over to apartheid even before Whitney and it's documented in, in history was such a blessing to me. Um, I remember standing on the stage and I was like, they were like, finally, and I was sitting there like, oh man, they know it here. And I, was, I felt blessed and I felt grateful in that moment. So because I had known the struggle, mm -hmm. it was like it had two meanings for me. Right. So it, was, it would be like that was one of the special moments. What about the one you mentioned earlier about the charts? Oh, oh, that was another one. See, but you know what's funny? Okay, so now that I've been in the music business as long as I have, I understand that being on a billboard, going platinum and selling records, is so different now than it used to be. When finally hit, it hit the first time around. So I didn't understand how hard it was to really be on the charts. So when I saw that it finally was on the charts for 33 out of 52 weeks, I understand the amazement of what that is in this moment even more than then because when they told me, I was like, I made number one. They were like, oh, you just don't understand. So now I understand what that means. What would you say was the worst part of your journey? Um, the worst part of my journey was trying to live up to other people's standards of who they thought I should be. And it continues to be that way. You're doing too much. You're saying too much. We need you to lose weight. <laughs> we need you to gain weight. We need your hair this color. We need this, we need that. We need your voice to sound like this. There's always a need to, instead of like a suggestion, like you're not a human being or person. I think that's where people sometimes get lost instead of saying, hey, I got a suggestion for you. Have you ever thought about? It's always like, you know what you need to blah, blah, blah. And they don't understand you get a couple of need to's 20 times a day. Right. Um, but I think it's also you setting the boundary and letting other people what you know what your needs are, and that comes with maturity. Without naming names, what was your best intimate relationship? Um, my second husband. Um, we were together for a long time, and <laughs> anybody can look it up, so it's no big deal. Um, we were together for a long time. He was a, he was a good man. He was a Taurus man too, good man. <laughs> <laughs> what would you say was your best relationship in business? Wow. Um, I'm going to be honest. I would have to say that one of my best relationships in business would be, and he's my bestie, but his name is Byron, Byron Garrett. He's my friend. He's a mentor. Um, he is like a business partner with me. Um, with me and my brother, my brother's my manager. When we meet my brother, um, and, and I say that to say this, my brother stepped in as my manager. He didn't truly know the music industry. After my mom had passed, my mother said, take care of your sister. So he just stepped in position to take care of my business affairs, but Byron was always there. So if I had to say business relationship would be Byron. What was your worst relationship, personal? Duh. <laughs> you don't have to name names. Um, it was some managers I had. I just didn't feel like they would get me. It was always an order or, well, you know, well, you better. It was like they would talk about me when I wasn't there and I used to agitate, I used to piss me off. <laughs> and they knew it too. And so it was just like, I don't know, I felt like after a certain point of time that some of the managers I had or that management start to treat you like a number instead of a person. Mm -hmm. Overall, what have you learned about relationships? It's not what you know, it's who you know in the music industry, plain and simple. There is no in-between. It's definitely black and white. And if people mess with you, they mess with you. And if they don't, they don't. And if you really want to be in the in industry, don't get on the bad side. Period. I don't like to live on regret, so no matter what, I wouldn't change anything. There's someone somewhere right now that just starting their journey as a singer, 
and they just merging on the highway and you 50,000 miles ahead of them and you saw a whole bunch of potholes in this road, what potholes would you tell them to look out for? <laughs> um, greedy people, misinformation, um, not having your own voice. Be authentically you. Make sure you stay authentic to you. Um, understanding that sometimes you have to take the emotion out of the artistry. And I mean that as your personal feelings can get in the way sometimes. You have to realize that sometimes you're here to make someone's bad day a beautiful day, even though yours was horrible. What is your focus today in life and in business? To be a great businesswoman, to make sure that the relationships that I have from this point forward are lasting relationships and relationships of respect, um, to make sure that whatever bodies of work that I put out, that people feel it in their soul and in their chest, uh, make sure I'm putting out the right bodies of work, um, making sure that I'm always growing and changing and really being authentic because I've been in the business now since the 90s and making sure that when, I'm, when it's time to stop that I don't keep going, that everybody has their period in their season and that just to always love it, always love the music because sometimes what happens off stage makes you hate what happens on and that's what keeps you going. That's what keeps me going. Hey y'all, I'm Cece Peniston, and we all have a story to tell and a lesson to learn. And this is my story. Choke no joke, I'm here y'all. You already know. Shout out to my girl, Cece Peniston. Much love to you, boo. Nice interview. Y'all like that one? Okay. Jazzy Jeff stepped in the building. What up, Jigga? Jigga Jazzy. What up, Jigga Jazzy? All right. Who else? Uh, well, I love Say Say. I love me some Say Say Two Queens DNA. <laughs> Lady Shay, what up? Pam Ellen is, what up? They coming in, they coming in. What it do, Vernon? I see you. Cece is a very beautiful person. She's like, me and her became so close after that interview. That is my baby right there. She is the sweetest person in the world. Trust me when I tell you. When she can be the meanest person in the world, you get on the bad side too. <laughs> she is a sweetheart. Indeed, Corey, she do look good. She still, she look damn good. See in person, she like pow, 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 too good. If you know what I mean, bro, bro. Jimbo, what up? Good looking, Admiral. I appreciate that. Dave Delicious, what up, girl? How are you? All right. So, man, choke no joke. We got the My Story from My Mouth Marathon going all night, Labor Day weekend. Everybody not out on these streets uh, trying to get COVID. Some of us is at home relaxing. Some of y'all burning it up. Some of y'all drinking it up. Some of y'all eating. Some of y'all just laying in the bed, snuggled up. You know what I mean? But I got you. I got you. I'm going to entertain y'all tonight, all right? Let's get into the next episode, all right? Joke, no joke, I'm in there. What up, y'all? This your man, King Crooked, and this is my story from my mouth. 
I am 44 years old. That's not my Wikipedia age, <laughs> but I'm 44 and I'm from Long Beach, California, and I reside in Long Beach, California. LBC. Um, how would you say was your upbringing? Poor, middle class, or rich? Poor. Probably below poor, below the poverty line, the real struggle. Right. Right. Um, did you grow up in a single or co parent home? Single, single parent home. Grew up in a single parent home, moms. You know what I'm saying? As a kid, what did you think you were going to be? I always knew I was going to be an MC. You know what I mean? Um, my mom and her twin sister, my auntie Charlene, rest in peace. Um, they put me in the studio when I was eight years old, and I recorded my first song called Microphone Controller. You know what I'm saying? So no matter what I was doing in this world, I always knew I was put here to be a rapper and an MC. What would you say was your first career choice? Music. That was my first career choice, you know what I mean? Like, I saw young rappers getting on, you know what I mean? And I figured that I could too, you know what I'm saying? Like, I wanted to be one of the first child genius rappers, you know what I mean? Before we start seeing kids like Criss Cross on the scene and another bad creation and, you know, things like that. I, f I wanted to be that first dude young kid out there so i used to always rap with the older dudes and, and and get my skills together sharpen my sword because i really wanted to be that dude at, even at a young age so it's always been rap it's all i know is the culture period i dropped out of school in junior high i dropped out and i start it was i start hustling you know what i'm saying try to help moms um I couldn't go back to school because I felt like I was wait I was wasting eight hours in a day that I could be getting money to try to help moms pay the rent, pay the bills, take care of my little brothers, you know what I'm saying? My sisters wasn't here yet. So it was just I dropped out real early and started hanging with a lot of older dudes because they was dropped out. You know, a lot of people my age didn't drop out yet. So I was all I was out there with the older guys getting all that game. They was really, you know, mentoring me on how to survive really. And uh yeah, I dropped out. But then when I turned 16, I decided I wanted to be a music engineer. And the school told me that I had to have at least a diploma or a GED. So I went back and got a GED. You know what I'm saying? When I was 16, I walked in. I was on the East Coast. I walked in. They had a program at Penn State. And I just went in there and took the test off rip. I ain't studied for it or nothing and passed it. You know what I'm saying? Because even though I dropped out, I was always curious and I was always big on self-education. So they was like, yo, we got to take your assessment test to see where you at with it. I did the test. They was like, yo, you ready? Aced the test, got up out of there, got my GED. You know what I'm saying? So that's as far as I went, GED. Okay. At what age would you say you became an adult? Oh, uh, man. I felt like I became an adult when I dropped out. You know, I took on adult responsibilities. I had my first child when I was a teenager. You know what I mean? So I had to, I had to provide for my, for my first born um, as a young kid. I was a kid with a kid. You know what I'm saying? So I, I'm, I'm going to say about, I got my first apartment. I think I was about 18 or 17 and a half, 18 when I got my first apartment. And I, and I knew what paying bills was. I knew what, you know what I'm saying? keeping the lights on, putting Pampers on, on, my, on my daughter and, you know, Similac and all that. You know what I mean? I knew what the responsibilities of an adult was by the time I was 17 and have 18 years old. So, you know, um, yeah, man, grew up fast. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. My early struggles pursuing this dream was I lacked the finances. Everything costs money. You know what I mean? And if you the kind of guy that's independent and don't want a lot of handouts, you want to be able to pay for your own studio time, pay for the artwork for the CD, pay for, you know what I mean, whatever you got to pay for, the transportation, whatever, you know, it costs to make music. So um, the finances was an obstacle for me at first, you know, and uh, I figured that out nickel and diamond, you know what I'm saying? Like um, <clears throat> just hustling. 
and, 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 and saving that money and taking it directly to the studio and putting that, putting that money right into the grind. You know what I'm saying? Um, that was a big obstacle. The second obstacle was it was a lot of fake Hollywood plastic people in the game. And I expected, because I came in young, you know what I mean? Like I said, I was already a parent, so I'm trying to get to this dream. And um, I expected people to be real, and I trusted people too soon. And a lot of people was fake, and they had ill intentions, you know? They wanted to take a young dude and be able to screw over him for 10 years. That's why they was looking for young artists, 19 years old, 18, so they can get them all the way to their 28. I'm going to eat off you for 10 years. I'm going to have most of your publishing. I'm going to have your royalties. I'm going to inflate the budgets. You're going to think that we spent 200000 on this. We really only spent seventy five, and we're going to pocket the rest. It was just so much fakery in the game that, you know, that was an obstacle because I had to figure out how to deal with that. You know, my pops, you know, um, rest in peace now. He just recently passed, but... Um, he left the crib, so I didn't have no contacts with him, and I couldn't really sit down and talk to an older person and be like, yo, what do you think about this contract? What do you think about this move, signing to this label? I would watch my friends in the music business talk to their fathers about certain things, you know what I'm saying? And I didn't have that, so I had to go find it on my own. And I did, fortunately. You know, I found mentors. I found, you know, my homie Elijah Asante. You know, he had a bookstore in Long Beach on the east side. And it's called a Huru Sasa. It's a real, uh, a, that's Swahili for freedom now. He used to mentor us. He knew what we was trying to do. So he would try to help us out as much as he can. You know what I'm saying? So he kind of like was in that father figure place and helping me get, you know, navigate early in my early years with the contract. So that was, that was kind of difficult. Then I overcame that. And um, yeah, just adjusting to the fact that people aren't what they say they are. And, and then, you know, this is the real devil's playground. Did you have anyone close to you that didn't believe in your dream? Not really. My mom, like I said, she put me in the studio when I was eight. Right. And that's my next question. You know what I'm saying? Your supporter? <laughs> my mother. You know what I'm saying? Like, so even when we was flat broke and poor and didn't have nothing, and the cornflakes turned into raisin bran because the roaches was in the box and the rats and the electricity was turned off and all that. My mom was always like, you can be whatever you want to be. If you want to chase music, I'm going to support you. If I got to take this minimum wage check and put you in the studio, buy you a boom box, get all those magazines you want so you can hang them pictures of Rakim, Cool G Rap, Big Daddy Kane on the wall, Ice Cube, Ice T, Too Short, I'm going to do that. And she's had my back 100, and it gave me the confidence. And I seen, because I had family members who wanted to be in the game, but their mother didn't push them. And I seen the difference between what a supportive parent is and what that looks like and with somebody who's telling you, you got a pipe dream. Because my cousins who had mega talent, and I'm not putting it all on their moms, my aunts, but I'm just keeping it a buck, they didn't support them. And you know, I'm here and they working in, you know, in the work industry, you know what I'm saying? They doing respectable jobs, but I know in their heart, they want to do music. So, you know, people need to really support, you know, they people, man. It goes a long way. Cool. The highlight of my journey. I got a few, man, you gave me one, you know what I'm saying? when you did the Rap City episode, you know what I'm saying, in Long Beach. You know, that's one of the, I mean, if I make a highlight reel, that's going on there, you know what I mean? Um, it's some homies that's in that, in that camera frame that ain't even here no more, or they doing, they doing life right now. You know what I'm saying? Um, that's memories, that's, that's one of their good memories, you know what I mean? Um, that, um, I've been on a double XL cover three times. You know what I'm saying? It's a lot of people who haven't even been on there once. You know, I was on a cover double XL three times. I was on cover the source. Um, you know, billboards everywhere, being on death row records, you know what I'm saying? And 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 learning the game directly from Suge and learning learning game from all the people that he had relationships with. Um so it's a lot of highlights, man. Slaughterhouse, you know, um, hip hop weekly. When I did the hip hop weekly series, I innovated a way for artists to market their music online. You know, I, I created 
a brand new business model. I dropped a song every week in like 2007, 2008. That was unheard of at the time. Nobody ever did that. And then after I did it, I went on a 52 week run then, you know, Kanye had Good Music Mondays and different artists started dropping weekly because they saw my blueprint, you know what I mean? And and I, I, I take that really, really my homie Watson from PSA Hip Hop, shout out PSA Hip Hop. He told me, he's like, your first weekly series is your Illmatic. He was like, that was one of the greatest rap series ever. You know what I mean? So he was like, you know, he opened my eyes because I always wanted to have a contribution to hip hop like America's Most Wanted, you know what I'm saying? Chronic, doggy style, something that I could say I did that and I wasn't even recognizing that my, my weekly series was that. It opened doors for me, it got me paid, it got me tours, it got me on the cover of the first freshman Double XL magazine, it got me recognition and it ultimately is one of the reasons why I, slaughter, I, I, I enter Slaughterhouse. So it really, it did work for me. So the weekly series, I think that's one of my big accomplishments because it also took the black cloud from over my head. A lot of people didn't want to deal with me when I got off death row because they felt like, yo, Suge gonna hop out the closet or something, you know. They was like, something is gonna go down. So a lot of labels and distribution companies and venues, they wouldn't, they wouldn't work with me because I had that, that stigma on me. But the weeklies op cleared all that away. So I'm going to say the first Hip Hop Weekly series, man. Long answer. <laughs> <laughs> nah, it was a great answer. Hmm. Man, I, I done had some life L's. I done took some life L's while I was doing this music. You know what I'm saying? I done took some L's. Um, I think when my uncle Leroy passed away, died of cancer, you know what I'm saying? He was a, a fire chief of Inglewood and you know, one of the heavyweights in the 100 black firemen movement, you know what I'm saying? And um, he always supported me, he's my father's brother. You know what I mean? And, and, and he really didn't like the way that, that his bro dipped out on his family, you know what I'm saying? So he tried to pick up the slack, you know, Christmas, birthdays, everything, he there, he there, he there, making sure we got something, you know what I mean? And as I got older and I got my own place and stuff like that, when I used to have to go try to shop my demo around back when shop, for those who don't know, because we in a whole nother era, shopping demos mean you got to go up to the record label and play your music in the office with a bunch of suits and hope to God that one of them fill you so they can kind of damn near cut a check to get you out the hood. You know what I'm saying? So my uncle, he would always let me borrow his car, you know, because I ain't have no car. I had to go from Long Beach to Hollywood to the record labels. And he'd be like, nah, man, go buy you a new outfit. He let me get the Acura back when the Acura was the hottest thing on the streets. You know what I'm saying? And I'll push up. And you know, when he died, he died before I was able to get my first cover of my magazine. I was able to really start having something to, I could come back and say, look, uh, this is what I did. You know what I'm saying? I, I, I feel like I was robbed of that. So that right there is kind of a low point for me, man. But I made him immortal on the Slaughterhouse song, Goodbye. I talked about him in my verse. You know, I gave it up to him. And we did that song and people in the crowd shed tears sometimes, you know what I mean? That's how powerful it is. But yeah, man, that was, that's, pretty, that's, that's a pretty low point for me in my career. Yeah, yeah, I'm sorry to hear that. Oh, good, thanks. Relationships, without saying any <clears throat> names, uh, what was your best relationship as far as with a female? Uh, my daughter's mother's, my daughter's mother. You know what I'm saying? Um, you know, she, she was, she stuck by me through thick and thin. You know what I mean? You know, being with a young rapper, just getting a taste of real big money driving European whips all over the place, diamonds hanging all over the place, money. You know, that's a tough, turbulent trip for a young woman to have to sit through. You know, she had to buckle up a few times because I was out there, you know what I'm saying? And, you know, it was, it was times where we, you know, we split up 
and she'll go back, live with her moms in Texas, and then I'll get out there even more. You know what I'm saying? But that's probably her texting me right now. But, uh, you know, she stuck with me through thick and thin of everything, man. So, you know, I made sure that when she wanted to go back to, when she wanted to get her college degree, I made sure that I was super supportive financially, anything I could do. When she would get her master's degree, I'm right there. I'm right there with you. Get your master's degree. You know what I'm saying? Like, I'm going to support you forever. You know, it don't matter if she across the map, she got my support because she kept it super solid with me. What would be your best relationship in, in business? Hmm. Damn, that's crazy. Um, I got some pretty good relationships, man. I got I got my homie Tony from Hitmaker. Me and him got a super great relationship. Me and Royce, we got a super great relationship in business. Whenever we do something together, we make it happen. Royce the five nine. Me and Joel got a super. Um, you know, let me see. Uh, I mean, I'm in business with my little brothers. It don't get no better than that. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? I mean, that's probably that's probably the best relationship. Um, me and M had a great relationship. You know what I'm saying? Um, still do. Uh, I, I, you know what, man? I got mentored by a lot of great people, and one thing that they taught me is not to burn bridges and to try to always keep things transparent and above board. So I, I keep a reputation of doing good business. So it's like I got a lot of people that I got good relationships with. Thank God. <laughs> what was your worst personal relationship? My worst personal relationship? Man, my worst personal relationship. Oh, with alcohol, yeah. That was my worst personal relationship. Alcohol took me on a roller coaster ride. You know I'm saying I'm four and a half, four, almost four and three months sober, four years, three months sober right now. Thanks, bro. Um, yeah, alcohol, bro. That uh, that bottle, that you know, it's like it ain't no genie in there. <laughs> <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Yeah. yeah. But it's a message in there. You know how they say message in the bottle? I yeah. got the message loud and clear. Right. You know what I'm saying? It, it ran through my it ran through my health. Yeah. You know what I mean? It gave me hypertension, mm -hmm. acid reflux disease. You know what I'm saying? It made me it gave me some of the worst decisions I ever made. You know what I mean? And uh it ruined some relationships that I had to come back and try to repair. You know what I mean? So my worst personal relationship I'm gonna say is with alcohol. All right. What about in business? In business? Man. Damn, what is my worst? I don't got too many bad business relationships. Um I'm sure it's something. I'm sure it's something. I ain't got too many. I ain't got too many bad uh, relationships in business. Knock on wood, man. Shit, <laughs> you know what I'm saying? <laughs> if I could go back and do it all over again, what would I change? I would buy more property. That's what I would change. You know what I'm saying? I bought a couple houses in the strip club, man. You know what I'm saying? Um, you know, I would buy property and invest. I had OG homies telling me to invest and I wasn't listening. I thought, I, I was like, I ain't doing that. Especially when they would tell me what to invest in. They're like, you need to buy this house over here. And then I go look at the house and look crazy. You know what I'm saying? And I'm like, I ain't buying that house. What am I going to do with that? But now the house is worth, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> Some big money. You feel me? So it's like, damn, I should have listened. So I really, I try to, I try to figure out ways to talk to the youth and the young guns and get across to them because they really should listen, dog. We be knowing some shit, you know what I'm saying? And my OGs knew some shit and I didn't listen. So if I had to go back and change anything, I wouldn't change being on death row records because, you know, I went to Aftermath and I talked to Dr. Dre and Dre was looking real interested in me, but 
Suge was moving faster and I ended up at death row, I wouldn't change that. I wouldn't change getting in the slaughterhouse, you know what I'm saying? Even though we kind of got separated and we in some sort of a limbo with Shady Records right now, you know what I mean? Um, um, I wouldn't change that, you know what I'm saying? I learned so much in that group and you know, I experienced way better times than, than bad times, so. Well, what's the limbo, Yarn? Um, it's just kind of like we sitting there, like, we kind of contractually still signed to Shady, but Joe and M had beef for a second, like not real beef, yeah. but you know what I'm saying? Like yeah. words back and forth, right. you know what I'm saying? Um, so it's like Shady's not going to move, in my opinion, on anything that has Joe Button's voice on it. And Joe ain't going to put his voice on nothing that got a Shady logo on it. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? I just have to kick that nigga out the group. <laughs> Take that nigga out the group and get y'all money, man. And nigga ain't rapping no more anyway. He retired. He retired, so man. I'm trying. I'm trying to put somebody pull. else even replace him. Right. Or y'all just rock. Y'all three just do it. No, he don't, he can't stop the, the the show though. Yeah, I know. Nah, you know what? He uh, we trying to we trying to get him out of retirement right now. I think I think we got. I think we, I think he got one foot out of it. Right. You know what I'm saying? He he almost there. We're going to get him out of retirement and have the original squad rock out. But I do, you know, if I got any say so, my vote would be for him and Eminem to sit down because I got love for both of them. And I feel like I'm in the middle of that sometimes as far as, you know, our relationships. But I wish that they would just sit down together. And if I could help facilitate that, that would be great. Whether we do it on Shady or not, I still think they need to sit down and talk like men. You know what I mean? They don't gotta be friends. They go their separate ways, that's fine. And then I'll feel more comfortable moving forward with Slaughterhouse, you know what I'm saying? Because I'm not, I'm not on some fuck shady shit. You see what I'm saying? So I, I don't want it to look like that at all. I wanna keep my relationship where it's at with, with them because they got love for me, I got love for them. I wanna keep my relationship with Joe. Sometimes you can't have any cake and eat it too, but you know. I mean, I, I look at it like this, man. For one, the nigga Joe keep talking about he retired. Right. So if you retired, nigga, we got to move on. Right. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. And if you stick into that retiring, and then this ain't double Dutch, nigga. This is yeah. our livelihood. Right. Like, you can't jump in and jump out when the fuck you want. Right, right. You know what I'm saying? Right. Like, my nigga, if you retired, then respect that we got a, a relationship with him. Right. And you already causing friction with him. And if you retired and you ain't going to do this, then my nigga, it's all love. Yeah. But we gotta move on. Yeah, I don't think he I don't think he got a problem with the three man slaughterhouse moving on. I don't think so. I think I know Royce Royce don't wanna break up the original squad. And I, I mean me personally, I don't either though, but I know Royce, he just like, nah, it's it's just more of an impact when it's all four of us, you know what I mean? So yeah. it's it's some things to talk about, but we still all got love for each other. And right now Royce is producing. Right. So I feel like, yo. This is the perfect time for, for Slaughterhouse to reemerge and reunite because Royce, he got the beats on deck. We could just go to Detroit to his studio and we can knock everything out and be straight. You know what I'm saying? I think Joe will get in there. I think he'll get in there. And then, and if, if not, and then on the M side, it's like, yo, M, if you ain't rocking with the nigga, just for us, let us go. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? Right. Let us go and let us do our thing. If you ain't, if you're going to shelf us yeah. because of this knucklehead nigga, then... Yo, let us go for us, for our families, right. and let us go and feed our families if you can't get along with this dude. Right. Yeah, we got a legacy. You know, you know? What I'm saying? we yeah, got yeah, a legacy. It gotta, keep, it gotta keep going. It gotta keep going. Cause you know I, I feel like I feel like dude, depriving the fans, man. We've depriving the fans. It been eight years, right? Damn. Since we dropped Welcome to Our House. That was that was eight years ago. And eight years ago. that was eight years ago, and people still talk about Slaughterhouse to this day. My thing is, within that eight years, if we would have just let go of two more records, three more Slaughterhouse joints, mm -hmm. y'all got to mention us with Wu-Tang, N.W.A., Public Enemy, Outkast, because at that point, we got the body of work. They, niggas know we got the talent to be mentioned in the same breath with them. Right. You know what I'm saying? But we, we don't got the body of work as a group. If we got six albums out, now we could come to that table and say what's good. You know what I'm saying? And, and get put in those hip hop historic books that we want to see. I'm a culture nigga, man. I love the culture. Right. 
I when I grew up, it was about yo, I'm gonna be just like them. I'm gonna be up there with them. Right. You know what I mean? So some people might not look at it that way. You feel me? So I'm like, yo, my voice and my vote as one quarter of the slaughter is let's work. Let everything else figure itself out. You know what I'm saying? Let's work. Let's put the work in. Let's let's keep this legacy going. We'll see what's up, man. You never know, dog. We'll see. Cause I I I've seen it. <clears throat> I've seen it happen several times when 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 artists ain't getting along with the the dude that got the that's in charge. You know what I'm saying? Right. I've seen it with Cameron mm -hmm. and, and Jewels. You know, um, you know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. when, when Jim and, and, and Joel started messing with 50 mm -hmm. and Cam held Joel's up for years until your flame is gone. You hot, you scorching, but oh, you, I'm, all right, all right, all right, two years go by, two years go by, three years go by, eight years go by. What, yo, what happened? Yeah, what happened? Yeah, yeah, same thing with Banks and, and mm -hmm. Yale. Both of them niggas dropped platinum albums. Yeah. Where's the follow ups? Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Banks. And we want them, and we want them. We want the follow-ups. <laughs> when they got problems with the, with the dude that's in charge, yeah, this is what happened, and this is what's in your case. And you, Royce, and, and Joe, a uh, victim of yeah, y'all just got caught in the drive-by because of this nigga. You know yeah. what I'm saying? So yeah. it's it's holding I, up. I think I, th I think years that yeah. can that. Could have put y'all in the, the the conversation of Wu Tang Outcast and it's because y'all got the y'all got the content, right. but y'all can't release it. Yeah, I mean, I think if, I I can't speak for Joe, but if he was here, I would think that he would say that we could have did the three man move. He ain't tripping. You know what I mean? So that you have that part of the game, but I think to be honest with you, Doug, we all grew as artists. We got a lot more to say now. I feel like right now, we could really tear some shit down. You know what I'm saying? And Joe got stuff to say now. It's been a minute. His fans ain't heard from him in a minute. They're going to be excited that he came out of retirement. They're going to want to hear what he got to say, how he going to put all these stories in the rap form. So we got some advantages. All we got to do is Voltron up. You know what I'm saying? And we be good. Well, I, I hope I hope it happens for y'all. Either way, three or four. Word. You know what I'm saying? But I know niggas is tired of waiting. Word. You know what I'm saying? You hear me, M? <laughs> niggas is tired of waiting. <laughs> Marshall. <laughs> well, there's someone somewhere watching this right now that's inspired to be an artist, and they just getting merging on the highway. To success that you are fifty thousand miles ahead of them, and you don't see various potholes in this trip. What potholes can you tell them to avoid? Uh, negative energy from people close to you. You got an uphill battle. You got an uphill battle. Don't have downhill a downhill mentality, because you your battle is uphill. Don't have people in your crew telling you, you're not going to make it. You're wasting your time. Go get a real job. Because you're going to need a sharp mind and a strong mind for all this shit you're about to face. And you ain't, you, that negativity could break down your spirit, break down your mind, your, pro, your thought process. It can make you start getting really um, insecure about your work and insecure about the future. And, you know, fuck that. Stay positive, keep people around you that's positive, you know what I'm saying? And have people on your team. A lot of the mistake I see a lot of young artists make, they try to do everything on their own. Go and try to find somebody who believe in your vision and put them on the team with you and play team ball with them. Don't try to dictate what's always going on. Sit down and listen to what they got to say, you know what I mean? Because they might have something for you, a jewel. Find that team, you know what I'm saying? And if you're on your do-it-yourself level, fine. Do it yourself. Learn about online mar marketing. Learn about social media marketing. Learn about search engine optimization. Go learn about shit so you can start cracking through the noise because it's a lot of noise out here. 
And it's hard for even major artists on major labels to break through the noise. Build your own fucking fan base up. Don't reach for that million fans. Fuck that shit. If that come, that's great. But that's not necessary. You can have 10,000 people. If 10,000 people spend $100 with you, that's a million dollars. 10,000 people. How you gonna get them to spend 100? I got a hoodie for 50, I got a t-shirt for 20, I got a whole fucking album for you and I'ma autograph these posters and I'ma put together a $99.99 bundle package. And if I got 10,000 diehard fans, I'm about to gross a million dollars as soon as I drop it. Go out and get you 10,000 people instead of looking at, I need a million fans, I need two million fans, I need to be streaming a billion times. If you build a solid fan base of people who are, who are with you, they will make sure that you eat enough to keep putting your art out on your own terms. You ain't gotta go inside no office and go listen to some sucker who don't care about hip hop one bit, don't care about your art one bit. He gonna pull out the charts on you and say, well, how many SoundCloud plays you got? Well, how many YouTube views you got? Well, how many followers you got on Instagram? That's his metric system. It ain't about how good you are. It ain't about all them fucking nights you stayed up rapping in the mirror, making beats. That don't mean shit to him. So you go into him, he don't give a fuck about you. Fuck him, go to the people. It's all about the people. Build your movement up from the ground up, one fan at a time. Engage with people. Don't think you too big to talk back to people online. And you can make a lot of money and have a nice living out here and do it your way. That's what I would tell them. What is your focus today in life and in business? My focus in life is to try to just be a better version of myself, period. You know, the only thing better than you is, is a better you. You know what I'm saying? So my focus in life is I'm getting older. I'm getting gray in my beard. You know what I'm saying? They say that, that comes with wisdom. I'm trying to be open to that wisdom. You know what I mean? I want, I want to make sure that, you know, I'm helping people. I want to make sure that I'm, I'm providing a service for, for people. Um, and I want to, um, you know, get healthy more healthy. I just told you about how, you know, the alcohol took me through changes. This pandemic shutdown gave me the opportunity to work on my health. You know what I mean? And um, I learned about, I learned how to eat my medicine. You know what I'm saying? So that's one of my main focuses in life right now is to share my story of eating my medicine and throwing away all the pills that was on my dresser drawer. You know what I'm saying? So on the business side, I'm coming with some, with a nutrition, I, I, I got a nutritionalist, shout out Jay. You know, I got a team. We come in with a diet plan and we come in with supplements, all natural, so we can help hip hop get off the high blood pressure pills because I started talking and telling people, because we don't really talk about our problems. I was in the emergency room hella times. I never posted a picture on Instagram from the emergency room. I never told people that I was in the hospital, you know what I mean, my health was failing. We don't talk much about that, you know what I mean? But when I started talking to people about it, I started learning that they had some of the same problems I had. I sat in the room with some of my homies, we ain't even talked about it, and they was like, yo, I got high hypertension, high blood pressure. I got acid reflux. I'm going around the room, boom, 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 boom. I talked to Roxanne Shante, the OG. She's like, yeah, I got that. You know what I'm saying? I talked to Joel. He's like, man, I got, I got to take these. I'm like, yo, listen, we guardians of hip hop, man. We can't, we, we can't just try to block out the culture vultures and the suckers and, and the whack rappers. We got to block out the bad health too. Hip hop is aging. You know what I'm saying? So we got to start. I want all the, the hip hop, everybody in the culture, our people, I want them to be able to throw them fucking pills out. Cause them pills gave me side effects that I'm still dealing with to this day. I threw my shit out. I was able to wean myself off with a doctor's help and I was able to throw my shit in the trash. You feel me? But I'm still dealing with some of the side effects to this day. You feel me? So I'm trying to put together a plan and um, put it in an app and put it all, package it up and give it to the people, man, so we can start throwing this shit away. And that's one of my life missions and my business mission. 
Yo, this is King Crooked, and we all have a story to tell, plus a lesson to learn. And this is my story. Yeah. Let's go. Joke, no joke, learn from mistakes too. I'm right here with my girl, let them know. It's y'all, y'all, the goddess, you already know what it is. Did I pull up on you? He pulls up in, on me in St. Louis. This is Yaya Yaw, the goddess. This is my story in my city. Welcome to St. Louis. Peace, peace. What up, y'all? It's your boy Choke, no joke. Out here in St. Louis. As you can see, if you from the Lou, you know I'm in the Lou. I ain't got to explain that to the rest of y'all frauds out there. You know what I mean? Learn from mistakes, tour. You know what I mean? I'm out here promoting my album as well as connecting and building and exploring and shine the light on up and coming new and established talent with my story from my mouth and my story from my city and just running up on people that hit me up in their city say yo choke i'm nice well i'm gonna let them prove it so there you go I know it's in, in St. Louis, they not too friendly. Like, like in Atlanta, you speak to people, they speak back. Out here, not so much. It, it's it's kind of like the New York mentality. Like, I don't know, what the fuck you speaking to me for? <laughs> you know what I'm saying? So, uh, you know that that means that it's really real out here but uh it's all love i still speak regardless that people don't speak back that's the uh southern hospitality side of me growing up in the south early i like that early on the shake that ny state of mind see me and uh, I walk in to let me get in front of them and then they stop and I get in front of them then they want to come walking behind me so I stopped backed up waited now y'all walk in front of me come on baby I said that's the southern hospitality me growing up in the South early. But I never said I lost my New York state of mind, god damn it. A nigga like me is not no goddamn fool. You heard me? Eden Wall raised me, always remember that. All right? Boogie Down Bronx raised me. 
I'm always on point. Like a sniper. You know what I mean? Joke, no joke. You know what it is, man. This is part of the Lou ain't the hood. So I don't want niggas saying, man, this, this nigga was down in the West End, man. He he wasn't in the hood. You know what I'm saying? I don't know nobody in the hood. And if I don't get a hood pass, I don't take my ass. Okay? I'm not 18 no more. If you ain't certified to go there, I don't need to be there. If I bring a nigga in my hood, they ain't got to worry about it. Ask Trick Trick in them. Charlie Baltimore, anybody else I brought to my hood that had all these splendor and jewel on and they ain't with no security. No, I'm not going in niggas' hoods. First of all, why would I be staying in the hood? I'm definitely going to be staying. This St. Louis, baby, it's beautiful out here. Let me show you, baby. All right? You thought, where you thought you was at? This is the loop. Don't think, I, I know it, it, it can get gut out here. I know it can get gut out here. But it's fly out here too. All right, you know I'm gonna stay where the fly shit is at. All right, where we eat whole foods, you know. So ain't no liquor stores over here. I can't, you can't even find no uh, no blunts, no wraps, or nothing out here over in this area. All right, you gotta go over to the west if you want some hit a liquor store. So I'm loving the loop. We're gonna go meet up with one, one of the artists that hit me up, Yaya, the produce, uh, Yaya the Goddess. She gonna represent y'all city. My name is Akaya Davis. I go by Akaya Iris, also Yaya the Goddess. All right. What are we doing here today? An interview on an up and coming artist. I'm the artist. Tell the people where we at. St. Louis, Missouri. Now, what brought you where you standing today? A friend of mine in um, Virginia um, sent me your video. Say their names. My friend, he's gonna kill me right now. It's blank. It's my um, twin. My um, We're both April 26 twins. All right, guys, what happened? Um, he actually inboxed me your video on Facebook. I watched it, saw you were in St. Louis, and instantly reached out to you. Okay. And why did he send you my information? Um, he said you were looking for talent. Okay. And what kind of talent do you have? Various. I rap, sing, I'm in movies. Um, I'm also an author. I write books, podcasts, etc. I have a YouTube channel. So who in St. Louis have you reached out to to try to help you with your music? N nobody, really. I'm self-made. I'm doing everything myself. I've teamed up with a, they're called ABL Productions, and they produce and make uh, merch. Okay. Now, why haven't you reached out to a Nelly or a Chingy? Or they don't help anyone get on. Why they? That's, that's, that's what I've heard. Can't go on with people here. I try to find Chingy, but I don't know how to get in contact with anyone. You try Instagram? Um, I did not try Facebook. I'm a Facebook user. Okay. Well, how did you try to reach out to Nelly? I never have. So you don't know if they can help? They might want to help. I was told to hit you up on IG, but I'm a Facebook user, so I just shot you my number. Right. You, and, and what happened when you shot me your number? You called right then and there. And I had to call you back. I thought you were a bill collector. <laughs> and then what happened when I called you back? Here we are. Okay. So, now that we're here, Yaya the Goddess, what would you like to do first? I'll give you the option of singing and rapping both but you could choose which one you want to do first. Um, right now, I don't have any singing songs, per se. I just got my voice back. Um, everything is rapping. OK. Well, hit me with something. Oh, I hit the camera with something. Let me turn my back. It's all on you. <laughs> just don't move. Stay in the frame. All right. This is a, a freestyle I'm going to hit y'all with um, to the beatbox beat. 
I said I hit just like Ray Lewis. I got dope like Frank Lucas. I'm that hope you can't do it. The queen here from St. Louis. You see me, get your cameras out, put them hammers down. I'm so cold. I see he watch you lay him down with the way I sound. I show growth. How many people want to try this queen? How many people want to try this thing? I been watching, I'm not stopping. I got options on the scene. I'm terrific, ain't no competition breaking all my foes. I'm terrific, make them listen without taking off my clothes. Give me the dough and start booking my shows for the fees. Get up, they suck the jealous hoes. How the beat get touched, they rush to hear my flow. I'm the baddest thing walking that you people ever saw. I'm a humble queen. If you test me, still will break your jaw. I'm leaving them in awe, and I hope you learning facts. All you rappers are in trouble, so just give me double stacks. I broke through the rubble, so I ain't concerned with it. See, I been through the struggle. Ain't no way I'm turning back. See, Akaya felt the pain, and I am no longer numb. Everybody scream my name, because I do this for my sons. I'm hurt. I'm standing tall. Stay clear or you will fall. I'm involved in this rapping, no capping, it's for the cause. See the applause while they driving in cars. I'm out of space with this swish. I am high as the stars. Yep, so go ahead and break bread and get ready. I'm coming now. You see the songs, just put them on. I'm on the throne, not coming down. Let me slow this down for you. I am going to soar. Pay attention to my move. See what's next I have in store. Yeah. So, so. Now that, that uh, you gave your city a sample, give them your information so now they can reach out to you. You can find me streaming on all platforms um, under Yaya the Goddess. On uh, YouTube, it's Akaya Iris, A K A Y A I R I E C E. Um, Instagram, Kaya Iris. TikTok, Kaya Iris. Um, Facebook, Akaya Iris. Everything is my name or Yaya the Goddess. All right, now, who in St. Louis would you like to work with? Who in St. Louis? Um, nobody per se in St. Louis. Who would you like to work with? Millie <laughs> In St. Louis. Well, they ain't, they probably ain't. Don't live in St. Louis no they more. They be but. here. They be here. All right. Well, then who else? They got it. Who? All right. So, who's the artist in St. Louis right now that got the bubbles that may not people might know out might not know outside of St. Louis? They got to be a local hero right now. Me. Okay. <laughs> all right, outside of you, you get um, shy and they gonna see this and they gonna say she ain't from St. Louis. She didn't name this person. She didn't name this person. I don't know no St. Louis rappers. Really? Really. So they don't play St. Louis artists on the radio? No, my stepbrother rap, Karan DeMarco. Go check him out. So they, they don't play St. Louis artists on the radio? Mm -hmm. Why? What, what, what are they playing? Atlanta artists? Everywhere else artists. Dirt. <laughs> Vine. Mo. That's all you hear in here. Uh, who else? Um, I can't get you off of my mind. That song, just. So you should say something to the program director of the radio station, the hip hop radio station here. Tell them they need to play more original artists. I've been. Look at these people, yo. They see us doing the interview. Bye. I actually tried to reach out to the radio station trying to figure out how to get my music on the radio. <coughs> This is this is when people are being deliberately rude. They see us filming. They see a clear, bright light on us. Like, 
and they come out and they go, 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 go. Oh and my one, God. One of them was me, oh, I'm sorry. They ain't, they're not sorry, rude ass people. All right, so talk to the, the program director in St. Louis right now. Tell them y'all need your own sound. We need our own sound. It's bad enough they say nothing comes from St. Louis anymore. Put us on the radio. We want to be heard. What's the radio stations here? 104.1 and 100.3. And those are both hip hop stations? Yes, sir. And they not playing no artists from St. Louis? OK. All right, well, hit me with the other joint, the R&B joint. Where you at, fake dummies? I'm here to make money. You here to hate, honey? Stay clear away from me. Where you at, fake dummies? I'm here to make money. You here to hate, honey? Stay clear away from me. You a friend of me, not a friend of me. Enemy, hinder me. You just envy me, but you were never ending me instantly. See, my energy travel can't get away from my glory. You'll see soon, just stay tuned to the rest of my story. Fly high, I'm letting you know. Cause I've been through all the pain and I've been through all the games. And it's time to rearrange, fly high. I'm letting you know what direction do I turn? Will these haters ever learn? But I'm remaining firm. Okay, y'all, y'all, the God is out here, y'all. We in the Lou. Let them know what part of the Lou you from. Ferguson, Missouri. Ferguson. We're Hands up, don't shoot. Oh, you from Ferguson, Ferguson. Oh, God. I grew up right around the corner from the incident scene. Really? How, what is the temperature like out there now? That's cool. The police don't want to do their job no more. Really? They say they got to back up. Um, they actually watched my son's father drive away from my house. He had beat my face in closed fist like I was a nigga. I had a stroke back in 2019. I was paralyzed on the right side down. A lot of my music is directed to the... Right. I'm sorry to hear that. Because no man should be beating on no woman. You know? He won't fight a man, though. Most men don't. That hit women. You know what I mean? And I'm sorry for that. Let me give you a hug for that. Thank you. I say, this is my legacy. And you ain't stopping me. Two twins from the same pedigree. Junior, he ain't claiming. Three kids left dangling. I think you need management. Cause ain't none of that shit heaven sent. Game recognized game. Now you gotta feel the pain. I said my heart was always open. Actually, that song, you could have lived, I don't know. That song is still stuck in Virginia. I got played. I got a freestyle to the Mo, uh, Mo 3 outside beat yeah. explaining that situation. Well, you always, can always get in the studio re -record, and re-record. And re-record. Oh, yeah. Always. Bigger and better. There you go. They not stopping nothing. You can't. Don't, and you can't let them. You keep You going. can't stop me. Success is in my pedigree. I'm heavenly. Akaya Aris, this is my legacy. Ow. Okay, yeah, yeah. I want to give a shout out to my man behind the camera. Choke. No joke. I want to give a shout out to everybody else he has produced and worked with in the industry. Hopefully, I'm one day. I want to give a shout out to all the rappers in St. Louis that I do um, deal with. ABO Productions, Mika on the East Side, First Lady, um, TZ. We got a song together on YouTube. Um, Cloud Chasers. Um, yeah, I want to give a shout out to Big Shine and Dej Loaf because those are two of my inspirations. Who are the other artists you like right now? T.I. always, he helped me through my childhood. Uh, and I believe he helped formulate my sound. I'm a lyricist as well. Uh, J. Cole, always, salute. Um, Koi, she doing her thing. Yeah, yeah, the God showed up, y'all. I'm letting her go. I'm letting her do her, man. This is how I do. Choke, no joke. You said you got talent. I come to your city. You see how where I'm at, Lulu? All right? That's how we do. Yeah, yeah, the God has showed up. Don't hate on her. 
check out her yellow belly. St. Louis, we here, baby. Joke, no joke. You know what it is. I'll be back in a sec. Hey, I'm out here to put y'all on, man. Choke, no joke. I'm in the loop. You know how we do. This nigga Big Gene telling me to go get some uh, Chinese food in the hood. Choke, no joke, in a loop. Man, Big Gene recommended this spot. If you're from the new, you know what I'm doing. I'm here, Big Gene. You told me come check it out. I'm here, man. Y'all see, man, I'm in the loop. If you're in the loop, you know. They don't, don't say Choke wasn't in the hood, man. And if this ain't the hood, I don't know what the hell is. Because <laughs> this is the hood. I, can, I know the hood when I see it. You know what I mean? All right? High fashion. Factory. All right, barbecue shack. But me, I'm over here getting the shrimp St. Paul and fried rice, like my man Big Gene told me. Gene, you, you gotta listen to fat people. When they tell you go somewhere to get this, something to eat, they know what they talking about. <laughs> you know, Gene can't cook as good as this. This is why he told me come all the way to St. Louis to get this, because he couldn't make it. I got you, Gene, I got you. Good looking. Shout out to the Lou, man. Everybody out here, one love. Yeah, yeah, what up? Okay, now, this what it is, G. Let's see what it's here for. Turn left on Union Boulevard. Mm. Okay, G. That's how they doing the loop? Shrimp St. Paul, huh? Yeah, I like it. Mm. I can make this myself. I got more skills than you, Gene. You ain't got more skills. I I wouldn't have to come all the way to Saint to uh, Grand and God damn it, shit. I don't even want to talk to y'all. Goodbye. Uh, check it out. Choke no joke. Learn from mistakes. DJ S and S the great. It ain't no telling. You be a first time felon. No telling when you be a first time felon. Y'all scared out there. Y'all gonna see it. She done dropped some bars on me. Got a story told. Hey, yo, Nelly. Ching A. St. Lone Chicks. Anybody. New producers. Y'all at Yaya ya, the Goddess. Tell them where to find you. You can find me on Facebook at Kaya Reese. Anywhere else, Yaya the Goddess or Kaya Reese. Joke, no joke, man. We out here in these St. Louis streets, man. Metro Boomer, hit me up. <laughs> you heard it. We out here. Peace. <laughs> choke, no joke. You know what it is. Yo, y'all niggas with the stay DL. Down low. Stop flossing, man. What you, you, what you just... You just want them to just come and get you? Learn from our mistakes, man. That's what this is about. Learn from mistakes. Choke, no joke. Let's go. You already know. Make a love. Let's go. My aim was enlightened. Drop jewels on you. You thinking I'm jealous? I ain't got cheddar like you. I'm the dude to a game. You got. School. Welcome to Cash View. What's up, this Deuce? You know we all got a story. We all got to listen and learn. And this is mine. Yo, what's up? This is Deuce. And this is my story from my mouth. Where do you live now? Where are you originally from? 
Right now, I live on the east side of town. I'm originally from the east side. That's where I'm originally from, Cashville. How would you say was your upbringing? Poor, middle class, or rich? I was poor. I'm Sam Levy Projects, straight out. As a kid, what did you think you was going to be? A basketball player. My first career choice was basketball. How, did you, how far did you get in your education? Got all the way up to a year of college. <laughs> did you have anyone close to you that didn't support you? No, never had that. Who was your biggest supporter? My mother. Why you say your mother was your biggest supporter? Because she truly believed in me. And she always told me, you can do what you want to do in life as long as you, you push hard and grind. It's all a mind thing. You can do what you set your mind to do. Did you have people close to you that doubted you? I wouldn't say people that was close to me. It's more so people that I knew, that I grew up around, but nobody as far as close to me. Everybody close to me, they always believed in me. Outside of your mother, and the, inside the business, who would you say was your biggest supporter? My biggest supporter would be my homie, Lil' Jimmy. My biggest supporter. Believed in me from day one. At what age were you when you made the career choice that most people know you for? I made that choice when I was about 19. And what career was that? Music. The age I felt like I came in the door was about 18. Why 18? I experienced a lot at 18. A lot. Uh, single parent mother, growing up in the housing projects, seeing a lot, experiencing a lot. It taught me to grow up real quick. So you grew up in a single or co-parent home? Single. I grew Mom? up in a single. Mom. Just my mother. Where was your pops? Pops was a rolling stone. Where he was, I had no idea. And you saw in your music, what was your early struggles? And how did you overcome them? My early struggles was uh, rejection and just learning my craft. And perfecting. What kind of rejection? Being told you can't do this, can't do that. As far as the music go, just learning and pursuing it. Just being told a lot what you couldn't do and what you can do. Now, did that come from your peers, your friends, or your family? Mostly peers. What's the highlight of your life? The highlight of my life is when I got myself educated and became smarter. My biggest highlight. What was the worst part of your life? No worst parts, because if I had to do it all over again to get where I am, I'd do it again. Is there anything that affected you in your life that changed your life? Yeah. My brother died. How did that change your life? It just showed me in the streets you can't trust nobody. Relationships. Who was your best, your best relationship? My best relationship, I would say, business relationships are the best. What was your worst relationship? Women. <laughs> <laughs> Where have you learned from relationships? Whether personal or business? You love unconditionally, but you know, still keep your guard up. If there was someone somewhere 
watching this right now, and they were following your footsteps to get where you at, what would you tell them to look out for as far as mistakes to get where you at? Look out for those who want to mislead you. And the most important thing I would tell them is trust God and never give up. How could they, how can they identify to someone that's misleading them? You watch their actions. If their words don't, if their words don't match what they're doing, they mislead you. What's your focus today on life and in business? Learning how to invest and building relationships. What's that on life? On life, as well as as well as uh, business. Everything is everything is about relationships. You build the right relationships with the right people. That's in personal life and business. You can go a long way. My future focus. My future focus is now to continuing to grow, continue to invest in myself, and take advantage of opportunities that are presented to me. Somebody hit us with a few, a few bars that's gonna mean something. Oh man, oh, a few balls, it's going to mean some, uh, the class is free, but you're paying the teacher. Either adapt to the game or go play in the bleachers. When there's rats on your porch, not to mention the leeches. The false prophet never practiced the thing that he preaches. I can't play with these features. I read it all in the scripture. Though I walk through the valley, I comprehend what it gets you. See the picture? There's too many niggas playing their tough role when hell itself got enough souls. She boy Deuce, man. Yeah. All right. <laughs> Choke, no choke. You know what it is. Yo, y'all niggas with a stay DL. Down low. Stop flossing, man. What you, you, what you just. You just want them to just come and get you? Learn from our mistakes, man. That's what this is about. Learn from mistakes. Choke, no joke. Let's go. You already know. Make a low, let's go. My aim was enlightened, drop jewels on you. You thinking I'm jealous, I ain't got cheddar like you. I'm the dude. Yo, you can follow me on Instagram at Dre Butters313. That's D-R-E-B-U-T-T-E-R-Z. You can hit me on Twitter, on Facebook, all the same. Dre Butters, D-R-E-B-U-T-T-E-R-Z313. checked in with Dre Butters, we all have a story to tell and a lesson to learn, and this is my story. Yo, this your man's Dre Butters, and this is my story from my city. Welcome to Detroit. Uh, I'm 37 years old, born and raised in Detroit, Michigan. As a kid, what did you think you was going to be? Uh, as a kid, I, I knew I was going to be a musician. Started off at like five, needing on pots and pans, uh, drums, keyboard. Both sides of my family pretty much did music, so, yeah. Did you grow up in a poor, middle class, or rich family? Um, I would say, I would say poor. Okay. I would definitely say poor. Some could say middle class, because how it looked, because it can be an illusion sometimes. But yeah, we pretty much was, was broke. <laughs> All right. Um, did you grow up in a single or co-parenting home? Single home, raised by my mother. Yeah. Did you, was your father involved in your life at all? Yeah, yeah, in and out, in and out at that time. Now I'm more so full time, but yeah. You said mm. now so full time? Yeah, yeah. I mean, he on car, you know what I'm saying? So, yeah. Do you think that affected your life in any way? Oh, yeah, major. Majorly. Can you give an example how? Um, can I give a little backstory? Yeah. All right, so uh, pretty much, you know how um, the mothers keep the 
child away from the, the father type deal, type situation. That's pretty much what it was. And then, um, you know, a bunch of other stuff occurred and time just went, went by. And then after I got older, um, I sought out to, uh, to be with him, to know, to get to know him. And then he kind of was like in and out. You know what I mean? But uh, it affected my life tremendously because um, it was just a lot that uh, I needed to know as a man, you know what I'm saying? As a growing man, I mean, which is, you know, relatable to anybody that's in that situation. But um, man, pretty much I just, um, I kind of was flipping out in school. I ain't had no direction as far as a male in my life. My mother did the best. You know what I'm saying? Best she, she could. I got kicked out of school, got kicked out of Detroit Public Schools, had to go to Macomb County Schools it's here in Michigan. Then I had to go to, um, I went to military school. That's where I actually graduated from military school. So, yeah. And then actually after, shoot, when I was like, I was like 24, I went to Vegas. And it's like one of those movie type situations. I met a girl and got married out there and then had no structure, you know what I'm saying? Had no, I just, I just loved, you know what I'm saying? Just in love, you know what I mean? So moved her back here to Detroit and um, we kind of just fell apart. Everything fell apart, lost it. And then that's when I went back in my mind, like, man, if my dad was here to teach me how to be a husband, or how to, you know what I'm saying? How to do this, then I would, you know what I mean? So it kind of, it kind of came back around, you know what I mean? But then I had to accept, like, you gotta love everybody for where they are in their life too. You know what I'm saying? Cause he's living and growing just like I am. So, you know what I mean? So yeah, um, yeah, so it, it affected me, definitely, for sure. So what would you say to women that keep their uh, kids away from the father or their sons away from the father just out of spite? Um. I would say, I would suggest them not to do it. You know what I mean? There's many different situations. You may have domestic situations to where, you know, they can't be around them or whatever it is, but I pretty much would tell um, all the women, especially our black queens, to uh, take it into consideration how it could have an impact on your child's life, uh, not just today, but for the rest of their lives. You know what I'm saying? Give them that opportunity, give them that chance and, and um, to have that in their life because um, more of our society, uh, we need to be trying to better, better this shit for real. I mean, I, I can cuss on it. Yeah. yeah, we need to be trying to better this shit for real. And I get it. A lot of these women are battered, abused, mentally, mental illness, all type of shit. You know what I'm saying? But that is definitely not the answer. So that's what I would say, not the answer. Uh, I got to the high school. I got, yeah. Uh, uh, what was your first career choice? Um, first career choice was, uh, I was a minister of music at church. I think I was like 10, started at 10. Um, yeah, playing keyboard, keyboard and piano. Pretty much did that. At what age do you feel you became an adult? Um, 30. <laughs> 30. 30, yeah. 30? Uh, just because um, us, uh, we go back to, you know, the father thing pretty much. Um, a lot of different people start to come in my life that were valuable to me and giving me information like, no, this ain't what a man, you know what I mean? No, this is what a man, this is what a man does, you know what I'm saying? Especially like Mr. B&B, Unk, Peanut. Like, he, he always like, no, man, this is what you do. Stabilize, protect, you know what I'm saying? Taught me about emotions. Like, cause you just living, just going, just like, oh yeah, no, this is energy. You know what I'm saying? So, yeah, pretty much it was just, pretty much it was um, mentors coming into my life at that age, 28, 29. Yeah.
So at ways did you make the career choice that most people know you for? Uh, like seriously, yeah. it was like 27. I think I was like 27. Where I said, I'm going to do this. I'm going to do this and I'm going to go to the top, pretty much. And what were your early struggles pursuing it? Um, couldn't pay the rent. You know what I'm saying? I stopped, I stopped playing at church. I was playing at church for the majority of my life. That's where my income came from. So I stopped because my time was, you know, I wanted to focus my time on learning how to uh, create, engineer, write, everything. So just locked in. So it pretty much was, you know, typ typical shit. Couldn't pay the light bill, water bill. Uh, and then in this city, you know, it's like, got a lot of artists that that are just doing this shit for fame you know what I mean so you would come across and be like, yeah man we got we got hundreds of thousands of dollars and then it's time to pay it's just like man can we get a uh, discount man um, so, so, so um, I mean yeah pretty much those was my those was my struggles I mean and then you overcome those struggles? Um, pretty much I decided that it wouldn't be wise for me to make that anybody else's uh, decision if I'm successful or not. You know what I'm saying? So I was like, I just took responsibility for everything, everything, even if, you know what I'm saying? I'm just like, well, I decided to be in the room with this person or wherever I'm at, where I decided to spend that money at the club last night. You know what I'm saying? I just pretty much went inward and um, started to just take responsibility myself. Did you, have, did you have anybody close to you that doubted you? Oh yeah, yeah, it was, it was a lot of people that I ran across that was like, uh, oh, no, this is, this ain't gonna work. You should do this, you know what I'm saying? But I did have my mother uh, supporting me, you know what I'm saying? But she's an evangelist in church, which was, which gave me a lot of hope because it was like, you know, your son out here talking about strippers and shaking ass and all of that, and she, she's proud of this. You know what I mean? In the in the in the sense, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. Uh, who would you say was your biggest supporter? Um, biggest supporter, I would definitely say my mom, for sure. My mom and my dad and my dad, both of them. Yeah. What would you say is the highlight of your journey? Highlight, um, man, it's just, it's so many. Um, well, when I got a call that I had a Chris Brown placement, record, beat, song, what wrote. Album was that? Huh? Which album? Uh, it was actually Snoop Dogg album. Snoop Dogg, uh, Thank Me. Um, I Want to Thank Me. Right. Yeah, yeah, I got that. It's Snoop Dogg and Chris Brown on there. Uh, Jazzy Faye, um, my partner Jupiter. We put it together. Came out. I was just like, "What, Chris? I'm Chris Brown singing my shit." Like it was, it was phenomenal. Huh. Uh, what was the most worst moment of your journey? Worst moment of my journey. Um, I I was on tour with uh, Mr. B and B. He probably tell you the story. And I um, I wanted to loosen up, so we ain't had no like cognac or nothing. I was performing at um, at one of those schools in Alabama, one of those colleges in Alabama. And my homeboy was like, "Man, I got this popcorn, this weed popcorn." I was like, all right, cool. I'm sitting on the bleachers eating the popcorn, forgot it was it was edibles. I was hungry, ate the whole entire bag. So this, uh, Peanut said, this is my best performance ever. <laughs> this is my best performance ever in life. So I was like, um, after the performance, it was it was great. It hit me like a ton of bricks. Everybody was against me. Everybody trying to kill me. I'm trying to get out the car. 
while the car is running. I'm running down the street, they chasing me. I go to the hospital, I bust through the doors, the security attack me. I'm thinking like everybody is against me. My brain is just like everything around me is like everybody's against me. Go back, go back to the uh to a hotel and and it was man, I'm gonna keep it short though, but it was six days. It was six days. I was I was fried for six days and I had no clue everything was real, you know what I'm saying? To me, everything, you know how it worked. So I'm like it was real dark, man. It was real dark. Yeah. <laughs> Did you get uh, any footage of that performance? <laughs> no, I don't know. No, I don't know. Man, yeah, he said it was right. right. <laughs> yeah, he said I was grabbing chicks' hands and going up to them, grabbing their face and serenading. I was like, what? <laughs> no, nah, facts. Relationships. What have you learned about them? Um, I learned that, first of all, that they're valuable, valuable in any, in any form, whether it's bad or good, because you can learn and take, you know what I'm saying, take from it to, um, throughout your journey, you know what I'm saying? Yep, if I can go back and change uh, anything in life, it it would be um, I would be definitely more aware of my thoughts, more more aware, more conscious of what I'm actually thinking, my self talk, because I learned that that that's your reality. What you think of yourself, you know what I'm saying? My self worth, self image, you know what I mean? I definitely would, would which I'm teaching my kids now, so for sure. Okay. Uh, my style of producing, pretty much, I'm versatile, R&B driven, uh, hip hop, pop, country, um, soul. Pretty much, I, I produce everything. Pretty much. Do you sample? Yeah, yeah. I'm sampling like more now because I'm I'm really hooked on original music because I'm an actual musician. So, but yeah, for the sound, like now, it's just popular. You know what I'm saying? It's in, so who are some of the producers that you like old and new? Um, I'm gonna say Kanye, Pharrell, uh, Timberland. Um, we go new now. I'm gonna say London, London on the beat, Jazzy Faye, uh, Swish Beats. Um, man, it's just so many, bro. Something. What artists do you like now? Now I like um, her. Um, of course, Chris Brown. I like Young Thug. Young Thug. Uh, who else? I mess with Money Bag Yo. Um, shoot, I was even messing with Jeezy, um, Ti. Uh, Jay Z, it's just, it's just, let's go on, man. So who, who, are, who are the new talent in Detroit right now that got a buzz that people outside of Detroit haven't heard of? A uh, man, I have heard of. Yeah, um, shoot, right now it's like Babyface Ray, um, Sada Baby, uh, Baby Money, um, Skilla Baby. It's a lot of babies. I was gonna say, God damn, man. It's a lot of babies. There ain't no more crying. God damn. Niggas gonna open up a nice hand, my. No, thanks. Yeah. God damn, baby, baby. So, what's your uh, goals moving forward in life and in business? Uh, in life, I want to become a uh, um, real estate entrepreneur, motivational speaker, master motivator. Um, pretty much starting my journey on that now. And then, um, you said music-wise as well. Uh, goals, 
I do uh, want to acquire a, a Grammy. That's one of the goals. That's that's like the goal. You know what I'm saying? So, uh, but I do want to also break an artist that the world never heard of. I want I want to do that too. So. Yeah. How has the corona, COVID, affected your life? Um, I mean, it was just, we was just inside, you know what I mean? I, I mean, I still was traveling, but it just wasn't the same um, as far as work. But life, uh, my girl had got it one time, and it was just, it was weird not being able to, like, you know, interact with her, you know what I'm saying? And then I had to go take all the babies and the kids. And then just, I mean, it was just a horrible thing for the um, uh, for the world to go through so many deaths and all of that type of shit too. So that kind of just impacted me. Like, man, this shit is, this shit real, you know what I mean? So, you checked in with Dre Butters. We all have a story to tell and a lesson to learn. And this is my story. <laughs> Choco Choco. You know what it is. Yo, y'all niggas with a stay DL. Down low. Stop flossing, man. What you, you, what you just. You just want them to just come and get you. Learn from our mistakes, man. That's what this is about. Learn from mistakes. Choke, no joke. Let's go. You already know. Make a love, let's go. My aim was enlightened. Drop jewels on you. You thinking I'm jealous. I ain't got cheddar like you. I'm the dude to a game you got school. I was pushing the act. Uh -huh. I had no haps if I was pushing the act. 